It's time I made a video about this. I wanted to give it some time, some play testing, some real time to sink my teeth in with this character and really be like, okay, are they as bad as everyone says they are? Unfortunately, bro, I, I think they gotta do something with John Shin. Let's get right into this. Obviously, my John Shin's level one, right? I didn't use my John Shin because if I did, she'd get she'd die. But the funny thing about that is she dies normally. I, I like she just she's not. <sighs> Let's break this down. So, quick overview of John Shin's kit. She has pretty much four things going for her. Her resonance skill, which is pretty much an infinite parry. This is a very good portion of her kit, but it's not the strongest part of her kit, but it's a massive, massive great thing, right? Uh, this really helps you when you're in a pinch, when you're really in like a, a, a struggle. And you know, for example, you're fighting a, a level five, level six hologram boss, and you don't have the reaction time to kind of either parry or dodge. You hold down your E, she goes, hey, and you know, she fucks you up. Cool, all right, that's valid. The Forte circuit is god awful. Uh, I'm just gonna say it, it's awful. Um, you can gr generate chi faster, which is nice compared to the CBT2 from what a lot of people have been saying. Um, but th the reason why this is bad is the damage reduction of 50%, it is not enough. <laughs> this is just not enough. Uh, despite the fact that, A, you could be pushed, you could be physically moved by a normal enemy when you were in this form so i'm going to put some footage on the screen throughout the video and you're going to be like yo wait what is happening i i was in the tower of reversing this little fucking lizard gecko thing from geico over here he didn't break my he didn't break my chi build like he didn't break the charge although we'll get to that in a moment was physically pushing me away from the enemies right which makes no like which makes no sense to me bro like fucking make me stand my ground if i'm charging up with the chi and i used all this time investment to get the shield and get the heals and I'm trying to get an AOE from them. The fact that an enemy could push me is ridiculous. Now, if this is a bug, fix it. The, the moral of this video, as you're going to go on, is if this is a bug, fix it. And if it's not a bug, please buff this character desperately. Like, please, please. Because their design is cool. Their combat is actually, you know, the actual animations, everything is pretty sick. Uh, but she just has no clear defined role. And she's really just... A master of nothing a jack of all trades i i don't even want to be that nice and call her that right now so back to the chi so you can either be moved in the chi or an enemy can just simply stop you in your chi they like a normal enemy could just stop you i was fighting a level six hologram boss one tap gone done this isn't going to be a real run i want to see something that's why she sucks this is this is why she's trash this is why yo People be in my comments saying, no, Jason is really good. You got to give her a chance. You have to give her a chance. She's really good. She really good. Her main fucking mechanic gets you one shot, bro. What's the point of the chi? I'm not saying give me Zongli. That's not what I'm saying. And I don't think you should give me Zongli. This game has a level of difficulty to it that other gacha games in particular don't have. Any gacha game. I think this is the hardest gacha game out there. It wants you to feel like Eldering. It wants you to feel really like it's a struggle. And I, and I love that. I love that. Like, yo, I was fighting a hologram boss yesterday for four to five hours straight. You're going to get that video soon. And it was just me getting my ass beat. And it was the most fun I've had in a game in a long time. But with that being said, what's the point of de what's the point of all of this? If this is all literally useless in the end game, why why make this a part of their kit? Or why why just make this character at all? Period. Now, uh, people are going to say, well, Ethan, you know, um, Ethan, what? What do you expect? You know, you're fighting a level six hologram boss. Of course, you're going to get killed. Like, of course, you're going to get beat up. I had my shield up. The one attack took away my whole shield and about uh, 70 to 80 percent of my health. The fact that the turtle, the turtle echo gives you a better shield that can sustain more, sustain more damage than Johnson's forte circuit, which is her main mechanic. To me, is just it's just not acceptable. I really, really think this is a little ridiculous. Uh, and then, you know, one of my homies was like, well, Ethan, what do you expect? An echo is it, the echo's sole purpose is for that. Cool. I love that. Johnson's one of her sole purposes is for healing and shielding. So I can't heal if I'm getting my ass beat, and I can't shield if the shield doesn't even fucking hold up for two seconds. I can't even physically shield if a normal enemy can interrupt me randomly or if I can just get bodied. Now, if you let, I, I, there has to be some sort of fix. Give her, give her invulnerability for that time frame. It, it, even if the shield, right, is just there to only make sure you don't get one shot, as opposed to getting one shot, you maybe take two hits, right? At least let the charge up be completely invincible. 
That way, at least I have a little bit of leeway to position and everything. You could say, Ethan, well, that makes it too easy. What else are you? What else is this character? How are you going to fix this? I don't know other, any other way to fix this other than reworking on Forte Circuit, which they won't do. Uh, giving her more shield. I mean, eventually, once you get the Forte up, it's going to give you a bit more shield. Uh, where is it? Uh, the shield obtained with heavy attack is increased by 20%. But even with that, bro, what are we doing? Like, it's it's not sustainable. I just don't. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, the Resonance Liberation really is only good for CC. And even then, the CC is really not that useful in the game at the moment. It, it, it's just like the main thing that she has going for her is this outro skill. Resonance Liberation damage amplified by 38%. Other than this, bro. Other than this, bro. I, 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 don't, I don't see the point of using her. You have someone like Yinlin, right? Yinlin, to me, is already a much better sub-DPS role. Because, realistically, her role is supposed to be sub-DPS, right? There's only two supports in the game on a technicality, which is Baiji and Verena. But the whole thing is, like, you could flex with Gion, and we'll get to her healing flexing in a moment. But her shielding flexing, it's just fucking whack, bro. My, why, is, why am I looking at my sub-DPS to give me a shield that only is going to allow me to get one hit... Despite also the fact that her damage is just overall mid. And I've used the DPS Johnson before. We have that up in the guide video. The damage output wasn't on the level of someone like a DPS with Yinlin. But let's get to the sub DPS part. Her outro skill gives you the electro bonus, but then resonance damage amplified by 25%. Now the 38 to 25%, that, that's a drop off, right? That's like a column like 13% or whatever the exact number is. But you make up for that damage percent based on Yinlin's personal damage and her coordinated attacks and off-field damage. Jonshin has no off-field damage. If you throw her Resonance Liberation on the floor, and it lasts for 3.12 3 seconds, right? This is her off-field damage. That is it. There's nothing else going here. Yinlin is giving me coordinated strikes for 18 seconds, bro. 18 seconds. So she's doing damage normally. She gets her own four coordinated strikes from Forte. Her ult does damage. Her Forte circuit does damage. And then her outro skill is buffing Electro, but it's also buffing that Resonance Liberation. I, I just don't see a reason to use this character. More Teffy. More Teffy's on-field damage is very solid, but his off-field damage with his Resonance Liberation is giving me coordinated strikes as well. Sanhua. Sanhua is not giving you the most off-field damage, right? Sanwa is not really giving you off-field damage at all, but the amazing thing about Sanwa is Sanwa's ability to restore her Concerto energy is so fast, and the actual burst of damage you can do with Sanwa takes two seconds. If you have your Concerto up and when you intro with her, you already have one Glacier on the field. All you have to do is skill, hold down the little thing, pop it, bing, there you go. You get heavy attack damage and you get glacier damage and then you could swap out to someone else. And at that point, you probably already have a concerto energy because it regenerates so fast. So there's just so many other options where it's like, bro, why am I using you? Yang Yang, I would prefer using Yang Yang. Yang Yang is going to give you more particles and they'll funnel more energy into your main DPS. I mean, the list goes on, bro. I just really believe that her kit is hindered by not by not locking down a role. So then people say, well, Ethan, you could use her as a support. You know, even myself, I've said, listen, you could use Donjin, you can use Morteffi, and you can use Jonshin if you have your two other healers taken up. Now, obviously, her healing is not going to compare to Baiji or Verena. And I don't think her healing is that bad either, but I don't think it's significant enough and to really warrant to be considered as a support character. Also, how do you get her healing? Well, you have to use your fucking Forte circuit. But if little Jimmy with the Borderlands mask slaps me in my fucking ass and then my Forte circuit just stops, I can't get any healing. And I can't, I don't get any shielding, right? So then what do I have? I have my parry and my outro skill. So have her kit right there. And realistically speaking, I'm not going to lie to you. And trust me, I'm massive skill issue. I'm skill issue number one, bro. I couldn't beat this hologram boss yesterday with a very well-built Yinlin. At some point, other than those little pinches, the parry is not really coming in handy that much. I don't want to have, if I'm going into any endgame content, I would rather have a character that is going to provide me actual real sub DPS damage and real buffs to my characters instead of a character that says, okay, I'm going to just be in the background just in case I get into a pinch and just in case I have to swap out and I have to use my E and then that way I could parry. 
I, I just think she is so underwhelming, and I don't know what they buffed from CBT2. I didn't use her a lot in CBT2. People said that they buffed her chi, uh, her chi, you know, actually, you know, obtaining it and the cycle itself. Um, and they said, I guess maybe the I don't know if the damage scalings are the same. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments. I obviously I didn't use her, so I have no footage of her CBT2 scalings. But I, she just feels extremely, 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 extremely underwhelming. Lock if you're gonna if you're gonna have this character in the game, I think you should lock down her kit to one or the other. Maybe maybe after she uses her her resonance skill. She gets a shield, but it's on a longer cooldown. Or maybe after she uses her resident skill, maybe she gets healing. Something. Uh, give me something. Because why is her resident skill completely invulnerable, but the Forte circuit gets interrupted or moved? Or moved, right? So, obviously, you could make any character work in the game. So, there's going to be people in the comments saying, No, no, but even even you don't understand. I used my Johnson and she's really good. She's really good. She was able to complete all the bosses so I crashed. She was really great. Brother, get, uh, come on, bro. Okay, congrats. Congrats. You, you forced to build yourself to a character that is extremely mid and suboptimal in every role. Like, I, like, am I going crazy? Tell me if I'm bugging out, bro. I got tight by this. I was really doing this hologram shit. And she was just underperforming in every way possible. Tower of Adversity. Even her CC. I CC'd off rip in the middle of the map. It didn't even get everyone up. I was like, bro. Now, the other argument is, I understand their standard character, right? And eventually, power creep is going to happen in this game. Because realistically speaking, we only have, you know, X amount of characters. We only have three Glacial characters in the game. The, the one Glacial DPS is pretty mid. Uh, Ling Yang. And we only have realistically two, three uh, Havoc characters. You don't really have like a Havoc support. You don't have a, a, a bunch of roles need to be filled. But I do think that these standard characters should still have some sustainability and some viability in year two, in year three, in year four. Some, something, just, so, just some sort of purpose, uh, at least in like year two, maybe not year three, year four. Right now, it feels like Calchero, Encore, who I don't have yet, and Verena, especially Verena, are only going to be the characters that I could see carrying on into any other, really, patch. I think I think Johnson's going to be completely obsolete within the next six months, truthfully. I think Verena's going to be goaded with the sauce forever. Encore's going to be very hard to beat, especially if they release characters that buff Encore, and you get a real, you get a real, uh, really, really, really good fusion sub DPS. I mean, you know, I think Encore is going to be here to stay. Kalchara, I could definitely see being power crept a little bit. But I, it's just like, man, come on. Like, you know, I, I don't know what they changed. And the changes that they made, if they made any, I just feel are extremely unsubstantial um, from what I've seen. You know, a lot of people are praising this character, but I, I don't think we should be praising this character. I think this character is ungodly mid. The definition of mid. If two out of your four, your four um, main mechanics don't work or barely work, what's the point of you? And realistically, again, that that parry is cute and it's nice, but you're losing out on so much DPS and you're losing out on so much, really just strategies and even buffs for your characters by running her instead of running someone like Mort with an outro skill that gives you heavy attack damage. Like Sanhua, that gives you outro skill. Like Yinlin, you're missing out on so much. So playing the safe route is cute, and you could do whatever you want, man. Especially the casuals, bro. Listen, if you like this character and you love them, I love that for you. But if you're looking to min-max and like really get in there with the nitty-gritty shit, the only good thing here is this Resonance Liberation damage amplified. Everything else is pretty fucking... This is not good. Um, Resonance Liberation is pretty just much there, and the Resonance skill is not needed. I don't, I don't think this warrants you to use a slot. Let me know what you think. Let me know. Maybe I'm crazy. Mwah. I love you.